Hey everybody, it's Webby and welcome to another video. Today I'm looking at the MG4 Long Range, the Essence 77. The reason I'm looking at it now is because recently the pricing of electric cars has been falling by thousands of dollars almost every month. So what better time to look at one of the best small electric cars on the market than now that it's had a massive price cut. This Long Range 77 model can now be had for less than $53,000 drive away which is remarkable value for money for a car that can drive up to 530 kilometers from a single charge. So today we're gonna to have a good look around the car, look at some of the features and have a drive as well, because from what I've heard and what I've read, this is a fantastic electric car to drive. So without further ado, let's get started and have a look at this new MG4 Essence 77. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the technical specification of this car. It's got the biggest battery in the MG4 range at 77 kilowatts, and it's got a single electric motor that drives the rear wheels. It gives you 180 kilowatts worth of power and 350 new meters of torque. To put that in perspective, it's about the same power as a Volkswagen Golf GTI, which is obviously front wheel drive. So performance from this car is actually zero to 100 kilometers an hour in six and a half seconds. So decent performance for such a small little car, and comparable to many hot hatches these days. As we'll find out when we go for a drive, it also handles a little bit like a small hot hatch as well. It's got rear wheel drive, multi-link rear suspension, and weighs just over 1,700 kilos, which might sound quite a lot, but for an electric car, that's actually pretty decent. Now, the Essence model stands out from the lower models in the range by the full LED headlights, and these 18 inch wheels with aero covers, um, which stand out, as I say, from the lower grade models. In terms of maintenance, other costs, the capital service that's available in the from every two years, which is about 40,000 kilometers, is kept for 14 years, which is an absolutely crazy amount of time. Over that 14 year period, the total cost is just under 4,000 dollars, which averages it down to less than 200,000 per year. It's actually comparable cars out there at the market, like your Toyotas and your Mazdas and the Hyundais, uh, so no more expensive to run or maintain one of those cars. The warranty period for this car is excellent as well. Seven years on up to kilometres, including the battery. And also gain seven years of motor assistance included as well. So the actual aftercare package for SMG4 is really, really impressive. In terms of practicality and boot space, on this Essence 77 model, we get slightly less boot space than you do with the models with the smaller battery because obviously the battery takes up a little bit more space. Uh, we've got 350 litres as standard with the rear seats in place, but if you fold the rear seats down, it goes up to 1,165 litres of carrying capacity. So actually quite good for a small car. There's no spare wheel in this car. Uh, like a lot of electric cars, you just get a tire inflator kit. Um, we also get this little bag in here which has got a charging cable if you just want to plug it into the standard coax or hook in your garage. But who's going to do that when it takes forever and a day to charge because when you're charging a 2.4 kilowatt, 77 kilowatt battery, do the maths, it takes a day and a half to do. So almost pointless having that. So you might as well just either install a fast charger at your home, which you can do for MG, um, or you can just go and use it one of the public charging places which is going to be much, much quicker to charge the battery on this car. Now, in terms of charging, um, the 77 range model battery can actually charge up to 11 kilowatts on a three-phase charger if you've got that facility at home. On public charging, it can do up to 144 kilowatts, so it can go from 10 to 80% in around about 40 minutes. Uh, plenty to sort of keep you on your journey, you haven't got to worry too much about range anxiety, uh, which obviously still these days people are concerned about. But with something like this that can do over 500 kilometers worth of driving range, I really don't think that's a concern anymore, uh, particularly with this long range model. All right, so for the next part of the video, we're actually gonna jump inside the car because despite the sun shining, the blue skies, it's actually bloody cold here in Melbourne at the minute. Um, hence me wearing a beanie to keep my ears warm. Um, so yeah, let's jump inside the car and have a look at some of the features before we take it out for a drive. All right, so let's jump in. I hope, um, actually it's a really windy day here, as you might be able to see from some of the trees over there. Um, so I'm hoping the audio isn't too distorted for you. Uh, anyway, let's jump inside the car. 
Uh, well, keyless entry and push button start, as you would expect, uh, a car costing this sort of money. The interior of the MG4 is actually really, really nice. It's got a bit of a mixture of standard car and also a bit sort of futuristic, as you can see there from the dash. Uh, the first thing you sort of notice is these lovely sport seats, uh, trimmed in sort of fake leather and cloth there in the middle. They're heated as well, which is really, really nice, um, and got lots of support to hold you in uh, when you're going around a corner. Uh, very, very nice interior. So let's jump in and have a look. So this is the view ahead of the driver uh, in the MG4. Uh, it's actually a really pleasant interior. I do quite like the mixture of sort of modern, but sort of traditional, but kind of not too oversimplified. And there's a few bits and pieces going on. Uh, and I'll show you some of the buttons and features as we go through. Um, the steering wheel itself is nice, sort of leather trim. There's some buttons this size, so things like your phone. Uh, you can then adjust um, what you see on the display in front of you with this button here. The programmable button here really comes in handy because it allows you to do things like either adjust uh, the air conditioning temperature, which is really useful because otherwise you've got to delve into all the menus on the sat-nav system, um, or you can program it to change your driving mode or how much regenerative braking you use when you're driving along. Uh, and then this button here, uh, you can just up and down the temperature uh, or whatever you've chosen to assign that button to do. Uh, over this side, you've then got all your safety stuff, uh, your adaptive cruise control, another programmable button there as well, which is really handy too. Uh, so those two programmable buttons actually make a big difference to how you use this car and make it much more usable. So here in front of the driver then, we've got the seven inch digital display. Uh, it's nice and easy to read as you're driving along. You've got the speed right there in the middle. Uh, we've then got the range and the battery life left there uh, uh, just below that. Over to the left hand side you can see some of the safety um, sort of notifications to tell you whether your lane keeping aid is switched on or not. Uh, over on the right hand side you can actually program this um, to choose what you want to see. At the moment I've obviously got um, sort of the range and the um, energy consumption if you like. Uh, but you could also program that to look at your tire pressures or your sat nav or your radio. Um, so lots of information going on there but not over complicated uh, which is really really nice. Talking about complicated, welcome to the MG4 infotainment system. I have to say, this isn't the best infotainment system I've ever used. The functionality in terms of what you can find on there is pretty decent, but how it actually works is really, really frustrating. It's very slow to start up. When you press a button, it takes ages to do anything. Uh, and thankfully, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although you have to plug them in, um, because everything just takes so I mean, you press a button, nothing really happens. You press the home button, and yeah, it just seems to take a little while for everything to sort of kick in, which is a little bit frustrating. So as you can see, we've got some tiles here for the basic functions. You've got your, your weather, you can choose your um, smartphone mirror in there, how much battery life you've got left, if we're listening to any music, and the built-in sat-nav. So this is the built-in sat-nav for the MG4. And the actual screen itself looks pretty good, but when you're moving it around with your finger, it does appear a little bit laggy, um, and certainly not as good as Apple CarPlay. Now I mentioned a minute ago about having the climate control buttons up there, uh, but also you can make the shortcut here on the steering wheel, operate your air conditioning. So once you've pressed that button there, all your controls then come up there on the screen. So you use the silver button here, to go up and down to adjust your temperature. You can see I'm changing that there. And then you can go left and right to adjust your fan speed, or you can just press the button in and it will use automatic for the climate control. And that's a really good shortcut for any MG4 owners out there because having to use the other way of doing it, of keep going into the climate control menu, um, it's just time consuming. And obviously if you're driving along, pretty dangerous to take your eyes off the road. And then below the actual infotainment screen, there's an on and off button there for the air conditioning. So you can just literally turn that off quite easily. Uh, front and rear um, sort of demist for the windscreens, the hazards, the home button for the infotainment screen, and then the plus and minus for your volume. So all pretty straightforward. Um, just below that then, we've also got a wireless charging pad here on the Essence model, which is good. But if you look at it, there's no kind of sort of restrictions there for your phone so your phone sort of sits flat on there 
if you go around the corner a bit too quickly, your phone will fall off and then end up on the passenger floor. Um, so ideally, you need something there just to stop your phone falling off. Uh, then you've got your gear selector here, obviously reverse neutral drive. Uh, and then when you press the button in like that, it goes into park uh, and electronic handbrake. So that's actually really, really easy to use. Um, underneath that then, we've got not only a bit of storage down here, um, plenty of room for sort of putting trinkets and wires and bits and pieces. And you can then slide that across to obviously close everything up. We've got a couple of cup holders and then just up and underneath, We've got a couple of USB charging points, got a USB A and a USB C, and also a 12 volt socket. But the downside is you need that USB A to actually plug in for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So they're not wireless, which I think is a really big miss um, because so many cars nowadays have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, it's almost becoming the norm. Anyway, uh, next to us, we've got this lovely sort of padded armrest, which does open up to get a bit more storage there as well. So that's quite a sort of handy to have. Um, but when you look around the cabin, as I said a minute ago, it's actually a really nice sort of place to be. Um, the plastic seems sort of fairly good quality. Yes, some of them on top of the doors are a little bit sort of scratchy, but you're not really gonna sit there tapping the doors all day long, are you? You're gonna actually be driving your car. Um, and that's the big thing about this, it is so good to drive, uh, which we're gonna get into in a minute. So this is my driving position here in the MG4. Uh, as I said earlier, the seats are super, super comfortable. There's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and the visibility out the side and out the front are really good too. The A pillar isn't too bad for coming out of junctions so you don't get too much of a blind spot. Um, and everything is laid out nice and easy to use. Uh, the sat nav system is fairly in reach um, as are the driving controls for selecting gears as well. Plenty of storage down here to store everything. Um, so the front part of the cabin is really, really good. Let's now have a look in the back and see what amenities we've got back there. So as you can see, getting into the MG4 was relatively easy. Uh, the door opens nice and wide, uh, so it's actually easy to get in. You do have to duck down a little bit because you've got quite a low roof line. Um, but once you're in, um, I've got an okay amount of leg room. I can get my feet under the seats, which is nice. Now I'm only five foot six and I'm sitting behind my driving position and there's not that much room back here. I actually thought this was a bigger car before, before I picked it up last week, um, but it's actually quite a small, compact little car. Um, so anyway, I guess I've got a decent amount of leg room. Um, headroom is actually pretty decent too for such a small car. Uh, we've got a couple of amenities, some pockets on the back of the seats here for storage for phones and iPads and that type of thing. Um, Disappointing, and there's no rear air vents. We've got one USB charging point uh, and a little bit of storage there underneath the center console. Um, but yeah, nothing, that's about it really. There's no center armrest to fold down. Uh, there's no cup holders in the middle. You do get ISO fix, you can put a baby seat in the back, but that's really about it. It's sort of fairly sort of basic back here. The seats are actually really comfortable, which is quite nice. Um, there's a little bit of storage in the door, but you're not really going to fit much in there, not even a bottle. You'd have to probably use the one on the uh, the back of the driver's seat. The floor is pretty flat, so you probably could fit three people in the back here. Um, although not big adults, because obviously it's not that wide and you don't get much space in front of you uh, in terms of leg room. Um, but if you're a family of four that aren't particularly tall, um, then yeah, this will be absolutely fine. So we're now out of that bitterly cold wind and we're going to take the MG4 for a drive. Um, I'm going to tell you what I think about this car because in the last week of driving this, I have to say this is one of the best electric cars I've driven and I've been lucky enough to drive quite a few. Um, everything I've read about this and watched videos of um, and everyone raves about how good this car is. Um, and yeah, it's like, I can't say anything different because it is such a good car to drive. It's won so many awards um you know, outright car sales card a year last year and so many different awards from different publications and i have to say it's well deserved there were a few little bits and pieces that aren't perfect like you know the safety systems but so many manufacturers are going that way where you have to turn everything off every time you get in the car mg is no different in that respect but the actual way it drives and everything else about the car is absolutely brilliant so Let's hit the road and let me tell you all about how this MG4 drives. 
One quirky thing about the MG4 is that once you actually got in, there's no start button. You actually, once you get in, the car's on. Um, that can be a good thing and a bad thing because, you know, if you've just got out of the car and you've gone into the house or whatever just to get some bits, the car's still on. If you go indoors and you forget the car's on and you come back an hour later, you'll have lost a bit of charge in your battery, which could be a bit inconvenient. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this car weighs just over 1,700 kilos. And a lot of electric cars weigh much more than that. Some of the ones I've driven are sort of two ton plus, and they really feel the weight when they go around corners. The MG4 in comparison feels very nimble and light, and you don't feel that sort of like every time you go over a bump, it unsettles the car. They've done a fantastic job with the suspension and how it controls its weight distribution and you know, to go around corners and things like that. It really drives very, very well. Um, and a lot of people sort of, in the last year or so, sort of say, oh, Chinese cars, they're not going to be very good. Come and drive an MG4, and I reckon that will change your mind. Because this thing drives really, really well. And you don't have to spend $53,000 like this long-range model here to get into an MG4. The entry-level car now starts with just under $40,000, which is a bit of a bargain, really. But of course, everyone's worried about range anxiety with electric cars these days. So this 77 Essence long range model gives you the massive 530 kilometers worth of range using the WLTP way of measuring things. Um, in the week I've been driving it, it has been pretty accurate to be fair. Um, when I picked it up, it had 540 k's of range on it. Um, I have charged it once, it went down to about 520. So it's nice to see it's actually pretty accurate. And 520 k's for a full charge, most people that will actually last you a week. Um, and sometimes in the cases, a little bit more. The nice thing when you actually pull away from a standing start at like traffic lights or something, is it doesn't shove you in your back and you know pin you in your seat and make you sort of a bit of an uncomfortable experience. The power actually feeds in sort of gradually at first and then really sort of hits you as you get going, which is a much nicer way of actually accelerating from a standstill. Now then in an electric car you do tend to hear a little bit of road noise and wind noise because obviously you don't get the noise from the combustion engine like you do in a petrol or diesel car. But the rest of the time it's very very quiet in here um, you don't even get much sort of tire noise coming through from the tires you get a little bit of wind noise like we've got today actually the thing you can hear the most is the indicator it's got the world's loudest indicator this car i swear maybe that's because the car's so quiet that you can really hear the indicator uh, let me give you a quick well, i'm actually just about to come up to a roundabout i'll give you a quick demonstration when we get to the roundabout um, because otherwise someone's going to think I'm indicating when I'm not. Uh, but yeah, it is honestly one of the loudest indicators I've ever heard. Um, which it doesn't need to be that loud because the car's so quiet. But um, anyway, that's what they've done. So yeah, have a listen to this. That's loud, isn't it? That's really, really loud. But at least good to know your indicators on, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The one thing I really don't like about this car, and there's one of only very few things, is the rear camera. It's got this strange sort of fisheye look to the lens, and it's not particularly clear. Um, so yeah, if I was going to mark this car down in any particular sort of department, it's the rear camera. Uh, it is pretty poor for a car in 2024. So that brings us to a conclusion, my review on the MG4. Um, I have to say I've really enjoyed my week with this car. Um, it's such a good thing to drive. It's got a great range. It's comfortable. There's lots of tech on the car. There's a couple of little bits that are obviously frustrating like a lot of cars these days. And there's an overall package. There's really not much to dislike about this car and lots to like. If I had to put my hard-earned money into one of these, yeah, I would. If I was looking to buy an electric car, I reckon this would be top of my shopping list. Um, is that it is such a good car um, so yeah that's my uh, overall thoughts and opinions if you've enjoyed the video give it a like share it with your friends 
subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell and keep an eye out for some more videos coming soon um, because the rest of this year there's a few bits and pieces planned not just with MG but a few other manufacturers as well so yeah keep an eye out for more videos to come if you've got any questions about this car leave them in the comments for me below and I'll answer them for you as soon as I can uh, and that just leaves me to say thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again very very soon